Welcome back guys, I'm Ellie, the Learning and Skills Intern, and today I'm here with Sam. Hi, I'm the Biodiversity Data and Survey Officer. And today we're going to be talking about how important butterflies are, and we're also going to be doing a fun activity to make butterfly feeders, which we're going to show you in a minute. But first Sam, let's have a bit of a chat about butterflies. Sounds good. So, I know it sounds like a bit of a silly question, but what actually is a butterfly? So a butterfly, the most similar thing is a moth, and they both come under a category which is called Lepidoptera, which is the type of insect they are, that's the moths and the butterflies together, and they're called that. Um, the difference between them is mainly in their antennas, so if you see a butterfly you'll notice it's got clubbed antennas, so it, it looks like it's got a club on the end, whereas you know, a moth antenna, it just ends in a stick like that, or it can be a bit like a brush, but it doesn't have that club, whereas the butterfly always does, and uh, that's how you separate the two. Um, always have two forewings, so that's the wings at the front, two hind wings, two wings at the back, and that, that's the best way of uh, recognising them as, as those two features. That's really good to know, Sam. So what sort of time of year would we be looking for butterfly? Would it be all year or the hotter months? Mainly the warmer months, so from April until around September on the whole. Um, but you won't see the same ones in that time. You'll get different species in April and May, like uh, the orange tip, for example. Whereas more this time of year, we'll be seeing things like Red Admiral and Peacock and Gatekeeper in very good numbers. The only ones you'll ever likely see in the winter are ones which hibernate, perhaps in your shed or something. And when we start to see them, how long will they be around for? How long do they live for? So some of these ones which hibernate can live a good few months, of course. They've got to get over the winter, whereas some of the ones which are only alive through the summer will only live as a butterfly for maybe a week or two. Um, although, of course, they'll have maybe been a caterpillar for a whole year before that. So in terms of the forest, Sam, are we doing any management or monitoring? Have we got any specific species? Yeah, yes. We're, um, we've got lots of uh, butterfly transects up and running, which our volunteers do. So they go out once a week. They walk along a set route and they count all the butterflies they see, either uh, about two metres either side of them. And the get information they gather has, has been excellent, really. So we've learned that we've got species in the forest which we otherwise didn't know we, we had. Uh, and it starts to make us think and, and work more towards managing our habitats for the benefit uh, of some of these species. So um, we'll get different ones in woodland, so we manage the woodland differently to the grasslands. Can you, can you give me an example of a species that you've seen this year that you didn't know we had in the forest? Uh, so Purple Emperor we have in the forest. I only saw my first one last year for all of 10 seconds, but we've, we've had a lot around this year. We've been looking out for them. So we've recorded them in quite a few more places than we had previously. Other butterflies that we've seen more of this year would be White Admiral. Uh, that's another woodland specialist, so um, we've had a few more places where they've been seen this year. Dark green fritillary, that's a calcareous meadow specialist, so they're much more down towards the cotswold than yeah, the forest. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of encouraging butterflies into our own gardens at home, is there anything that we can do in terms of different plant species, in terms of feeding them? Is there anything that we could do quite easily at home? Indeed. So you may think that it's all about flowers and, and whatnot, and, and that is important, but of course, because there's that caterpillar stage of the life cycle mm -hmm. as well, um, they also need to have that. So quite a few butterflies will actually eat nettles as their caterpillar food plant or just long grasses. So even a small patch of nettles or long grasses and you may get peacock and gatekeeper and whatnot using those to lay their eggs in. And then of course, if you've got a, a good variety of wildflowers are best because they're adapted to, to feed on those specific wildflowers. If you've got a lot of them around, then that, that gives mm -hmm. the butterfly food to, to eat. So are you essentially saying that if you want to encourage butterflies into your garden, you need to take into account the whole yes. life cycle really from start to finish and what is what is good for each stage of the life cycle? Yeah, very, very much so. So now we've had a quick chat about butterflies. We're actually going to go into how you can make your own butterfly feeders and therefore encourage butterflies into your garden. So we're going to do two designs today. Me and Sam are going to do one each. So I'm quickly going to talk through mine first. So for my design, what you need is you need a simple jar with a lid. It can be any jar of any size, shape, whatever you've got spare. You need a hammer and a nail, a paintbrush for your glue, and a type of, you can use string or wool or a type of garden twine as well. And this is to hold your jar up. You also need a little bit of cotton wool and a fake flower, which I just got a little fake one that I got from home, but you can also make one out of origami or paper. So for Sam's one, we are going to be making it out of sponges. So any type of kitchen sponge is pretty good. A jug to soak our thing in. And then we've got garden twine. You can again use wool if you've got that, but garden twine is quite good. It's quite good for the garden. It's quite natural looking. A pair of scissors to cut things up with. 
And then most importantly, you need to have your nectar. Now this is just sugary water, which I've made with hot water and sugar. You can boil it, but you can also alternatively use sugary flavored syrup. So I've got a lemon flavored syrup. So if you've got that lying around and you want to use that, that is good as well, but sugar tends to be better. Okay guys, so let's get started with the one I'm making. So the one I'm doing is an upside down butterfly feeder. So what you need for this, first of all, is you need to get your jar that you've got. It helps if it's been washed and the label has been removed. You then need to get your nail and your hammer. When you are doing this, guys, a bit of health and safety, either get an adult to do it with you or ask an adult to do it for you. Do not do it on your own. So what you need to do is just put it like that. Quickly, it's about the centre point. You can use a marker to do this. And then you've done your hole, if you can see the hole there. You might want to make it a little bigger. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger so I can get my cotton wool through it. And you've got a good size hole there. So taking the non-sharp side of your lid, you then need to feed through your cotton wool like this. So you've got a good amount hanging out. And then this is the bit that the butterflies actually feed from. You then want to put your lid back on. What I would normally do in this circumstance is actually fill this with my in my neck for my sugary water but I'm not going to do that just for this example. So to wrap my feeder today what I'm going to do is I've used a bit of sort of woven wool together to make a nice kind of intricate pattern. So what you need to do is make sure if you're doing it like this that your bit of cotton wool is sticking through like that so you've got a bit of cotton wool on the end and then you want to turn your bottom over and then pull up your string so you create sort of a net for your glass jar. So then once it's like that, you can hang it up. So where, where would you say is a good place down to hang it up in your garden? Uh, from a sort of a, a low branch, really. Um, so you can easily get it down and, and put it up, easily uh, refill it when, it when it's all used up. Maybe somewhere in the garden where there aren't many flowers, so it's uh, a different place for them to go. Or, or I guess maybe like on a balcony or something. Yeah, 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 that would work. Once you've made it, do you, need to, do you need to be refilling it regularly, do you reckon? Or? I don't think so, no. Right. I, think, I think it will take a long time for um, them okay. to, to drink all of it. And also, guys, what you can do to encourage the butterflies onto it, and this is only if you want to, you can get like a fake flower, which you can make out of origami. And what you can do is just take a bit of glue and stick it on. It creates quite a pleasing looking butterfly feeder. And it will also encourage the butterflies to land on it as it thinks it's a flower. Alternately, guys, if you don't have a net like this, you can use string to make one. So you can just tie different knots in it and then pull it tight and use it to hang up your butterfly feeder. So Sam, how are you going to make yours today? So I have the scissors and I have the sponge. What I'm going to do is just open up the scissors, be careful not to cut myself of course, and just put the scissors through the sponge like that. It helps if you do it both ways, so you make a, a large enough hole. Health and safety wise guys, if you're Indeed. doing this method, we just like to say, please get a parent to help you when doing this. Don't try and do it yourself with scissors because they can be sharp and you might injure yourself. And then if the, the hole's too small, you can sort of rip this slightly to make it larger. Then you can hopefully get your twine here and just feed it through. Cut the one end. You can see it'll hang up like this. And then just soak it in our sugary water here. And then it should be good to go. The butterfly should come onto the yellow bit here and start feeding, hopefully. And this is quite a nice simple design, guys, because it's a lot of things that you'll generally have at home and it's quite natural and it won't look out of place in the environment. We hope you enjoyed that activity, guys. And uh, if you go ahead and do it, please send us your photos of what you've done on social media. And keep an eye on our YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.